my name is Emmanuel Richard. Um, I'm an undergrad here at Harvard. I'm Swiss. What a coincidence. Uh, please take a seat. Um, it is my pleasure to, first of all, welcome you here. Thanks for coming. My name is Felix Mösner. I'm the CEO of Swiss Snacks at the Science Consulate of uh, Switzerland. Uh, it is uh, really a great uh, honor and uh, privilege to welcome you to uh, the Swiss Day at H Harvard, uh, which will host uh, several speeches on the topic why Switzerland is one of the most competitive uh, countries in the world. I I'm not yet entirely through, but it's a, a brilliant book uh, written by James Briding. And we are also here to build bridges, bridges between North Northern America and Switzerland, connecting the dots in education, research and innovation. I thought the, the Swiss day at Harvard went extremely well. It was the first time it's ever happened and I think the resonance was terrific and I hope it forms the basis of being able to repeat this in the future. I thought the team did a terrific job. Um, Swiss Next was a great supporter. Hublot is a sponsor, uh, Emmanuel Richard, Jamie Stevenson, Matthew Manson, etc. So I, I really thought it was terrific. And we had a, a top class group of speakers. And as far as I could gather, the, you know, the audience was just thrilled to, to be a part of it. Most of the real benefits came from knowledge-based achievements. Uh, they have the highest density of, of Nobel laureates in the world. I mean, how many people here have immigrated from a different country? There's, I, you know, I, th I think each of you can understand what it means to move to a different place and it forces you out of your comfort zone, having to develop relationships, look at things in a much different way. So if you look at this, the statistic before, you have effectively almost 40% of society which is outside of their comfort zone. And being outside of this comfort zone is an incredible impetus to do new, new things. Uh, welcome to Harvard. Thank you all for coming. We live in a world in which uh, the people can come from anywhere. Uh, the idea can come from anywhere, the customers can be anywhere, the mode of production can be anywhere, uh, and the money can come from anywhere. That is a much more competitive world than it has ever been. The world has an infinite supply of problems, but every entrepreneur views a problem as an opportunity. The watch is no more an information tool for you. The watch is a communicating tool to the, to the people. It gives you time, and it gives you color, it gives you emotion, it gives you fashion, it gives you dream. Then came this incredible new thinking. Let's get rid of the timekeeping. 95% of the Swiss exports are these old tick tock tick tock tick tock movements that do not perform. They don't tell time right. Uh, they, every three years, they stop working. You have to bring them to service. Uh, but, but, it's a product that has no obsolescence. It will never become obsolete. In 100 years, in 200 years, a mechanical watch will be repairable because it's only made by man, by hand. If you have the same team since 79, you don't need to make any uh, conferences together because the eyes can speak. <laughs> and when the eyes speak, the eyes never lie. We have a typical way of when the master explains during four, five, six years to the watchmaker, he gives him back his knowledge. It's a kind of incredible generosity. And that's even a manager, a CEO or an entrepreneur. He's only successful. He can only measure his success the day he's gone. Because then he will see how good he was with the team that follows him. And if it's a disaster, he has just been a dictator for himself. What does it take to feed the world with a growing population? Next 50 years, world's agriculture will have to produce more food than in the last 10,000 years. The approach is to form allies 
and alliances, to find allies and to form alliances with people that until very recently have been our fierce enemies. You know, like green organizations which hate us and we hate them. But that's just not going to address the challenge that we are facing here. Well, the Swiss Day, uh, the first, as I understand, ever uh, here in Harvard, is, was a great uh, uh, event. First of all, well planned, well organized. And then, you know, uh, for me as a Swiss, <laughs> I learned some new things about Switzerland. So how could it be any, any better? It was very uh, enlightening, very great personalities of Swiss industry. History, you, would, you could even call it. Um, and, and, and they gave uh, great presentations, very inspirational. And this is what we're going to do. And you say, well, this is all. I don't have a PowerPoint presentation. I'm sorry, I'm the only one who actually has to think while speaking. I give a lot of money emotionally away because I like somebody or I like, oh, this is a great guy and he has a good program and it's a great charity. If it succeeds, I don't know. But that's we're back to the feel-good thing, and you need this also when you get a little bit older. The Swiss were perfect, I heard today. There, there was it's absolutely nothing wrong with this country at all. Uh, this is well, at least my impression. But there is a problem. The Swiss tax code does not favor charities. The more people give, to more people they find in need, the more those people will help again. In terms of innovation and change, there's probably not one area that's been more important to us in the last generation than that of the internet. Uh, today with us is, uh, is Professor Urs Gosser. He's Swiss. He grew up from the town of Solothurn, which is, I guess, not too far from Hans Jörg Wies, had his main business. Um, I mean, if you think about it, it was not that long ago, the 1970s in CERN, what actually created the internet just outside of Geneva as a small uh, system of communicating among, among scientists. Suddenly, privacy concerns becoming a real issue uh, for a global uh, company based in Switzerland. Uh, the recent um, case where this has clearly come up is, is Google Street View, developed largely in Switzerland, um, where you know suddenly uh, uh, the uh, Swiss Data Protection Authority um, intervenes and, and requires Google to make significant changes to Google Street View Switzerland. This then goes all the way up uh, to the Supreme Court. Uh, and the interesting part is if, if you would drill down and, and look at the actual curriculum uh, with respect to media education and digital literacy, it's amazing uh, what this curriculum uh, requires uh, students to know after their basic education, after primary school. Trust is good, control is better. This dictum, this famous dictum by Lenin could also come from the risk-averse Swiss, particularly as it relates um, uh, to politics. I think um, no country in the world has gone as far as the Swiss in terms uh, of uh, government um, uh, of the people, by the people, for the people. That means, if we want to be successful in that, that also means that Swiss businesses have to involve themselves in politics more. Um, in Switzerland, it's much more important because so much is being decided by, that, by the population that you convince the people about the necessities to stay competitive. And that also requires that credible people um, talk in public, take uh, public positions. And that, in recent years, has uh, waned. Um, we have a rather weak government that by design. Our uh, government um, doesn't really have a presidency. Uh, the seven-member government has a rotating presidency every year, so we are not having a particularly strong person uh, at the head of our government. We don't have a Merkel, we don't have a Sarkozy, we don't have an Obama, and that uh, is then a disadvantage. So next we have Professor Nancy Hoffman, who's uh, she's teaching at the Graduate School of Education, and. Probably she's getting ready to talk what, what I think is probably the most important issue facing societies, not just in Switzerland, but across the developed world, is just how, how do you actually deploy the most important asset you have, which are people. And uh, if you look at youth unemployment rates around the world, um, it's very disturbing to sort of see the signs that you see. Um, places like Spain have 25, 30 percent of their young people who are not working at all. Switzerland has a very low unemployment rate, and a lot of people believe that has to do with the unique edu education system, which permits people 
to have either a university education or an apprenticeship or a vocational type education. Uh, Nancy's done a study, she advises the OECD where they look across 17 different countries over long periods of time. She's written a book about this and she's going to share her wisdom and insight. So we look very much forward to that. There really isn't a theory of why some countries have strong apprenticeship systems and others don't. When we worry about what happens to this current generation of young people, we worry about youth unemployment. And what you see here in the red circle to your left is that Switzerland is among a set of countries that have the lowest youth unemployment in the, in, among the countries where the OECD actually keeps any kind of data. We have the industry with Swatch, Tissou, and all these brands, and we have the high-end brands from Hublot and down. <laughs> Sorry, this was the little advertising <laughs> session because it's the end of the speech. <laughs> Thank you.